On September 14, 2015, gravitational waves were detected for the first time. They were produced by two black holes colliding 1.3 billion light years away. This discovery has opened a new window into the universe gravitational wave astronomy. This same window may someday in the near future let us hear the whispers of the big explosion in which our own universe came into being, the Big Bang itself. When I submitted um, an application to NASA for a grant in 1998 to study gravitational waves, I got funded. And essentially, we became part of the LIGO Scientific Collaboration in 1998, so 18 years ago. The way this center started, started with work that was highly theoretical in nature. And, you know, the center was founded 13 years ago. And we focused at that time on, on doing astrophysics, data analysis, and we wanted to um, move to um, something more experimental because we saw the opportunity to attract many more students. Uh, as a student, I joined LIGO project in 1994. I was a student at Caltech and I found the project very interesting, very exciting. LIGO is an acronym, it stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. And it's a detector for gravitational waves which uh, uses um, interferometric techniques, which uses optics to sense very small motions of test masses. Building this whole lab out of, a, out of a lecture hall, this was the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. Building this lab? Yes. This was, was this was This was a lecture hall, empty lecture hall when I came. And the students helped me to change the floor on which we stand, change the ceiling, we put the wall, we put those doors in, we did everything ourselves. Hello, oh, my name is Anton Grybowski, so I want to introduce you to this optics lab. Uh, you can come in. Over here we have uh, multiple optical tables under special enclosures. Uh, and currently there is uh, multiple experiments going on. Usually it's like two experiments per table. We want to build a huge cavity, something like LIGO, but smaller. <laughs> but right now, uh, I can say by my, uh, for myself, I'm working for the detector characterization group, and that's data analysis and detector characterization. Right. So what I do is to use uh, all the data recorded by thousands. It's not only a single sensor. We have thousands of sensors measuring not only gravitational waves, but also uh, noises and, and, you know, like environmental disturbances like uh, lighting strikes, like uh, earthquakes, uh, you know, many, many things, right? So what we do is to compare right, our channel. So we said, okay, we saw one gravitational wave uh, and check if there was uh, any disturbance at the same time. Every group, in my, in my case, uh, they're trying to take noises, noises that can be interpreted as gravitational waves. So right now we have a noise between 20 and 50 hertz. And we need to find where this noise is coming from. What we know is coming from one of these uh, misalignments on the mirrors. But it's uh, really easy to say it, but it's a lot of work and a lot of people working, like me, engineers, and people from that car uh, detection characterization, as Guillermo said. Like, it's, it's a huge community. It's a huge community. That's why we are more than 1,000 people working with, because each person has a different role. Even it's a small role, but it's a very important role. I've been part of the detector characterization group and, and uh, I've been uh, part of the center for, for a while so in that capacity I've, I've done uh, looking at data trying to find noise sources and uh, working on methods to, to try to mitigate the noise. 
In general, gravitational wave can have completely different frequencies, but turned out that LIGO releasing gravitational wave in frequencies that are similar to uh, frequency uh, band that we can hear. It's probably from uh, 20, 60 hertz to a couple of thousand hertz. So pretty much if you uh, get signal from the LIGO detector, if you filter it out correctly, connect it through the audio amplifier to speakers, you will actually hear how this gravitational wave sounds. And it's something like whoop. Just wanted to clarify, so essentially what they're doing is they're measuring distance. And this distance oscillates in a very um, simple terms, right? And uh, when they translate that into sound, that's how um, you can sort of have this uh, sound of a gravitational wave. But there is no real sound, nothing like that. Uh, the, the whole detector is in the vacuum. That whip becomes of the motion of the, of the orbiting around of the two black holes, right? So it's right because you start like very slow, very far away, and it's like low uh, amplitude. So it's but one of the things that sort of uh, gives me a feeling of accomplishment in having people like a, like a year, like all our students feel part of this and they're from here and they feel part of that they think that's something